Hello and welcome to the Game Dev Outpost. In this video, we'll be going over the basics of creating a visual shader in Godot 3. So if you watched the previous video on creating materials, you'll see that there's a lot of options in the default material. With visual shaders, we can create something more refined. So to get started, we'll go to our resources or our file system, and we'll right click and we'll go to new resource. The first thing we want is a shader material, and we'll give it a name. Now this is going to be the material that we want to apply to our mesh. So we'll go to our mesh and then we'll drag this material right into the material slot. Now we double click on our shader, you'll see we don't really have any parameters. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to create another resource. And this is going to be a visual shader. And the moment that we create that, it's going to open up the visual shader graph. Now before we go over the visual shader graph, we need to connect our shader to our material. So we double click our material, we can drag our visual shader right into the shader component. And then after that, we can come right back to our visual shader. Now in the visual shader graph, by default, you'll notice in the inspector that there are properties. You can change the modes and you can change the flags. For right now, I want you to leave everything as default. The next thing to note are the components of the shader. So if we click on this fragment, you'll see that there's vertex, fragment, and light. For now, for the basics, we're gonna work with the fragment. So before we connect any nodes, I want to show you some of the most common nodes you'll be using. The way that we can add nodes is by coming up to the left hand corner and clicking on add node, or you can right click. Now by default, you'll see a bunch of menus that you can comb through to find the nodes that you want, or you can type in the search bar for nodes that you might already know. So I'm going to type in const. We'll be using a color constant. We'll definitely be using a scalar constant, sometimes you'll be using a transform constant, and sometimes you'll be using a vector constant. Another one you might be using is a texture. Each of these data types can be used for color, grayscale, and direction. All right, let's set up a basic material now. So the first thing we'll want is a color constant. And we'll hook that up to the albedo. And the next thing we want is a scalar constant. And we'll copy that, and we'll paste it, so we have two. For metallic and roughness, these are values that can only go from 0 to 1, or from black to white. And then the third one we'll set up is emission, so that's going to be another color. We'll paste that here, and plug it in. And then we can see, since our shader is connected to our material, and our material is connected to the mesh, we can see things updating in the scene right away. So from here in the visual shader, we can play with the parameters, but what we really want is we want to be able to adjust the parameters in the basic material. And as you can see, when we double click on it, there's nothing to adjust in here. So if we go back to the shader, each one of these data types, these are constants. But what we really want is we want a uniform. So we want a scalar uniform and we want a color uniform. These are parameters that we can name and then we'll be able to adjust them in our material. So let's hook these up again. This one is going to be for the albedo, so we'll even name it albedo. This one is going to be the metallic intensity. This one is going to be the rough roughness intensity. And this last one is going to be emissive. Color. Now, after we have all that set up, if we come back to our material, we should be able to see that there are shader parameters. And if we open this up, we can adjust all of our parameters. Now, one last thing, if you wanted to have opacity in here, all you need to do is you take the color uniform, you plug the alpha into alpha, and then if you come back to your material, as you adjust your albedo, if you look at the alpha channel, this will adjust your opacity. Alright guys, this covers visual shader basics in Godot 3. If you thought this video was helpful, please let me know by commenting down below and liking the video. Thanks guys. 